compared to the next 20 years, nothing has happened yet. We're at the beginning of the beginning. We're going to see far more changes in the next 20 years than we've seen in the last 20 years. We had to change the culture. And one of the reasons we had to change the culture and we had to build a new brand is because they were telling me all of the reasons why we couldn't win. So this nice, neat marketing um, opportunity that most of us grew up with, that there was a certain predictability in life stage and age based on attitudes and demographics, throw it away. The major obstacle to effective business transformation is not technology, it is not money, it is the mental mouths of the people involved. If I'm going to give you my data, then I want something tangible back in return. So it's about reciprocity, and it's about a very clear value exchange. Next time you give a brief, or get a brief, how can we add technology to get a wider audience and to touch the senses in a new, interesting way? Can we add artificial intelligence? Can we add GPS, Wi-Fi, augmented reality? As a young student, it was the spark and catalyst that really made me get into this world. You want to hire, a lot of kids, but you want to have great coaches in place. Comment is free and facts are sacred. The value of creativity has now been recognized by clients. A business is just an idea. How interesting is that idea? And how do you communicate that I idea to as many people as possible it remains fundamental to the development of that company. Great ideas, profound ideas, brand changing ideas are going to be the future. Creative excellence drives 30% of your ROI. We have to be a little careful about being seduced by this idea or this ideal of failure. It's the discourse of the successful. Digital narcissism, of course, is again a reality. Context is everything. And I think we need to bear that in mind. When we're, when we're executing ideas on behalf of our clients, as advertisers, you have to work a lot harder to engage people and give them kind of access to your story um, so that they can kind of you know, help spread, spread your brand. The reason why uh, brands are not welcome uh, as a general statement in social feeds um, is that ads in social feeds are attacks on the user flow. Your loyalty varies with your brand size. The more customers you have, it turns out, the more loyalty you have. And so you suddenly have another general law emerging there, which is that actually, if you want, you know, frankly, if you want more loyalty, get more customers. Realism doesn't mean pessimism. It just means that we, as an industry, have to get a hell of a lot better at dealing with these semi-detached consumers. And we have to get a lot better at living in a world of low gravity for brands. Disloyalty due to a bad experience is four times as likely as loyalty due to a good one. This view of growth is fragmented and perhaps even a little, more, a little bit myopic because what we are hearing is the word more, more often than the word better. When what we're asking is, is very challenging, it's to, it's to lead and to collaborate at the same time. In a homogenous marketplace, if you look and sound the same as everybody else, guess what? Procurement gets to, to, to play the game. Price becomes the differentiator. The stuff that may feel experimental and a bit risky now is the stuff that actually drives a business and keeps a light on, you know, in a kind of five years' time.